Hello and welcome to 4000 and Counting. I am Wattie. This is Mark. This is my little friend on the end of my nose. All three of us are going to take you through a quick wrap up of last night's game between the Peterborough Phantoms and the Leeds Knights. Now we're going to eat humble pie straight off the back of uh, straight off the start of this. None of the two of us had had the result anywhere close to this. Um, I know Ant Russell. He didn't have the result anywhere near this either. He said I was watching his stream back this morning and he said. If the Phantoms win, it will be no more than one goal. I believe we said something very similar. But do you yeah. want to do you want to let the people know what the result was if they don't already and kind of how it broke down, period, goals, etc.? So the result was 6-0 to the Ooh, Phantoms. Jeez. I think I had a, had Phantoms down as winning the first game, like 2-1 or something like that. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't remember. I don't think... I think if you if anybody was tweeting out before the game that Phantoms are going to win six 0 I'd say you need your fucking head checked. Do you know what I mean, like with with nothing to go on, we didn't know last night was going to go down like that. But if we're just going on like the season as a whole, their games have been very tight, other than the nine three win by Leeds the other night in Peterborough. Um, yeah, so period breakdown. I think Phantoms took the lead in the first. Yeah, that's right. I think it was one zero at the end. And of the then first. dominant second period, four goals, two of them on the P- coming on the PP, and I mean the, the goals were shared about. I mean Joe Gretton jumped in on the goal scorer mix in a cup final. There's a name that you probably didn't have down on the goal scorer sheet. Beautiful tip in from a shot from Norts on the point. Um, yeah, very very strong performance by the Peterborough Phantoms. We did say on an episode a couple of weeks ago, like look out if you draw them in the playoffs because poof, they're they're a big team, they're a strong team, they're a well drilled team. They they've pushed these big two like Milton Keynes and Leeds all the way this year. Oh, they've been a great team, and to see them this time give someone like Leeds a spank is unreal, especially in a cup final. So we talked about it. Leeds' biggest re- defeat of the season, 4-1. Swindon Wildcats. Don't believe they've let in six all year. I don't know. I don't believe they've been shut out all year. So what we're seeing is like a Friday night firsts. And I don't know if it was a fuck you, but they gave Kieran Brown man of the match. Marzi got it for them. And they gave Kieran Brown man of the match. Now, without having seen the game, we would have liked to have watched the game, but we didn't get a stream. So no, no, can actually can't really comment on plays itself until the highlight package comes out. But I don't imagine Kieran have been very happy getting man of the match in a 6-0 game. So that might just ignite a little bit of fire in him for the second leg. Are you surprised by the result? Surprisingly, the scoreline, <laughs> yes, but if anyone's going to beat the Knights by that amount of goals, then I have Phantoms as that team that would have them. I, I, Phantoms are full of quality. You could say the same for Milton Keynes, but we're not talking about them. Yep. Phantoms of a young team. They've got some veterans in there that, you know, look at Norse. I can't, can I even call him a veteran? He's yeah, been he's around a... there for a long time. He's been there for a long time, and when you've got guys like him really stepping up, he's a leader in itself without Wells, and see Wells contribute as well. Yeah, yeah so Norton great. got a goal, Weldon got a goal, Gretton got a goal, you're getting them from all over the ice, and then obviously the usual suspects, Sledovsky, Padlek, and uh, Ralphs all picking up goals. I think the fact that they went up one nothing after a minute and 34 seconds it really just changes the tie so quickly. Peter will get that confidence. They manage to then keep leads off the board for the rest of the period. You go into the second period, you have a good team talk, you're pumped up, you're excited. You're going, right, boys, we've actually got them tonight. And then you go and have that second period where you score four goals unanswered. The <laughs> If you're going to try to be chasing a team to make a deficit up over two legs, Peterborough's not the team you want to be doing it to. Slava will just drill the defence. They don't have to go and entertain in Leeds. They will just shut up shop, left wing lock, four guys back, pucks go deep, keep the puck out of your own end. And it's 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 all Peterborough's to lose now. If Leeds were to come back and win, well, we saw we saw them beat Peterborough by six goals last weekend in the in the nine three victory at, at Breton, but 
in a two leg cup final, the way it is set right now, Peterborough would really have to capitulate in order for Leeds to to pick it up. I think if Leeds could have got out of there, snuck away four two. Uh, 6-2, sorry, so it was a four-goal deficit. If they had managed to nick that third period 2-1, they'd been a lot healthier spot going back up to Ellen Road. The way it stands yeah. right now, they're very much up against it. If there's a team that can score a bucket load of goals on one night, it's a team with, you know, <laughs> Howlett, Shudra, Witowski, Brooks, Brown, Haywood. They've got goals there. And if there's a goalie in the league that can keep it down to zero or one goals against to Sam Gospel. I just don't, I, I can't see it happening. If there's anyone that could score that amount of goals, like you say, it's Leeds. And <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people out there that are still going to think they could turn that around. And that would seem crazy if it was any other team. And I mean that with the greatest of respect, but with Leeds firepower at home, knowing they've just took an ass kicking, which is, which is, uh, very unlike them. Mm. I think that there's goals in them. As they showed in Breton, they scored five goals in 15, 15 minutes in that first period. So It can be done. It, it can, can definitely... be done. And I let us know in the comments. Like... Guys, let us know in the comments. What do you think? Obviously, we're telling you what we think. Let us know what you think. Comment. Let us know. Sorry, but... Now, I want to see, before we came online, I saw a comment from Mac. And he was saying that there's a guy missing that you know, they took a beating or whatever, but with this guy, it wouldn't have happened in this fashion. And that's uh, Sammy Sajak. Yeah, I, that was the other thing. There there was players missing from both sides. I, I think Andrew Day captured it. We, we're not going to go fully into it today, but after the both legs are finished, we're going to give a proper full cup final roundup. I'd like to get a couple of the other boys back on to talk about the final, talk about their experience as well. Speak to Glenn, speak to Mac again. Obviously, there's going to be winners and losers. There's going to be upset and there's going to be elation. But that's been another video. Don't forget, you can support the pod by heading to Patreon or buy me a coffee, both slash 4000 accounting. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. It really does help us grow. Keep doing what you're doing on here. The subscriptions are creeping towards that 1,000. We're going to be there before before the playoffs. We've got more guests coming on. There's going to be a YouTube video dropping Monday. Turner Ripplinger from the Guildford Flames. You're going to want to ch- tune into that. Next up, our next video is going to be about the Solway Sharks. Now, we talked about them the other day. Why could we be talking about them again? Tune in and find out. Peace. Peace.